Great. So uh, welcome everyone again. This is the online uh, workshop practice session, and we are not today doing the late session. And our demonstrator will be Ian, and uh, Maxim will be holding the uh, camera, and uh, Oz will be helping with the um, video uh, issues. Hopefully, we will not have any, and hopefully, you will have a good uh, experience today. So I want to just make a quick um, introduction to the um, session. So I will share my screen. Yes. So for safety, um, you, you may all know that uh, we need to have safety glasses. So this is very critical for late machine or manual machine. And we need to have uh, steel toe cap boots. Okay, so these two are kind of uh, uh, non like, like mandatory ones. And then we can have a lab coat as you can see on uh, Ian. Okay, and we have some optional ones uh, for late machine or for manual machines, you can have earplug and some kind of disposable gloves. So this will help you to touch the workpiece uh, if it's oil, like oily surface, so it will protect your hand. And for example, in this machine that we have, uh, this is a Colchester machine that you, that you will see today. Like always try to locate the red, red parts in the machine because these are related to the safety. For example, the red E stop here is very critical. So always know where the locations of these buttons, the emergency stop buttons. And you can see another red handle there that's also for stopping the machine. Okay, so this, this kind of uh, import, important information is needed in the beginning because it can help you to cut power to the machine right away so that you can be safe. Okay, so today we will do uh, turning from a hexagonal bar. So this is our stock material, and then we will have a final component. So we want to normally demonstrate, like demonstrate and make you practice these late operations, but of course because of the online environment, we can only help you to uh, like feel the environment. So hopefully you can have a good uh, good practice today. So we will have a machine screw in the end. So the, uh, the steps are as follows here. So we will do some facing turning operations in the beginning, and then we will continue with grooving chamfering. And then in the second part, uh, after some break, uh, second hour, we will do threading operations and uh, we will drill a hole and then we will finish by parting of the, uh, of the component of the screw. Okay, so I think we are, oh, another, another thing is, so we will have a Kahoot quiz today. So if you if you don't know the address, this is the Kahoot.it and the pin number, I will also put it into chat and we will have a Kahoot quiz uh, starting uh, during the session. So we will have a winner at the end. Please use your student ID, okay? So don't use your real name. Um, so just go ahead with your student ID so we can easily track the attendance also through the Kahoot. So thank you very much for coming again. So let's start with the session. Yes, we are back at you, Maxim. We can begin, Ian. Okay. Good morning. Uh, my name's Ian, and I'm going to do the lathe demonstration this morning. What we're going to actually do is we're going to make a bolt. Okay, that's what we're going to make today. This is the bare material we're going to start with. This is mild steel. Okay, so it's mild steel hexagonal bar. Okay, that's what we're going to use. So the first thing we do is we put the material into the chuck. Thank you. 
So the material is now in the truck. Okay. The next thing we need to do is we need to get a tool from doing the first operation. In order to produce this, there is a series of operations, an operation sequence. So we go through that sequence so we produce the final product. Okay. So the first operation is this. And we're going to do is a 12 millimeter diameter on the front end of that. Okay. And it's, that's called straight, straight plane turning. Okay. <laughs> the first operation, this is the tool we're going to use. If you look at the profile of the tool. Okay. The tip is made of carbide. Carbide tip, mild steel. Obviously the tip has to be harder than the material. You've got paper scissors, okay? <laughs> Carbide, mild steel. This is the tool holder. We can adjust the tool height. When we turn in, the, the tool height needs to be in the center of the tool. Not above, not below, it needs to be in the center height. We can adjust that. We can adjust this using this. Once that's set, then all we do is we put the tool in the tool holder. Tighten the tool holder up, and you'll be roughly be able to see that the tool is in the center height of the workpiece. Okay. So now, what we need to do is we need to set spindle speed. Mild steel. As a cutting speed, each material has its own cutting speed. The optimum cutting speed for mild steel is 30 meters per minute. Okay. Because we know that, we can then do this formula, which gives us the spindle speed. So maybe so we, using maybe that they can formula, do this. it gives us a spindle speed of 800 revs per minute so, for this first operation. Okay. okay. Yeah. Is so that okay, Murat? Maxim, I, I just wanted to tell like um, if students can uh, calculate that value, is it possible? Yeah, we can we can wait a couple of minutes so that. So everyone, uh, if you are there, so the students it, calculate this value. By <laughs> so if, uh, can Ian show the formula again so that people can by themselves calculate. Yeah, so everybody can see this formula here, V pi D thousand times thousand. So, okay, I'll just put it in there. Yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you. For now, we, so we just wait a bit more. Can you, can you give us now the value, diameter value, The diameter value, yeah. the diameter. No, 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 not, not, no, I'm just asking students, sorry. Uh, for the students, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. yeah, so if it's, if the speed is 800 RPM, oh, yeah. If the speed is 800 RPM and the speed is 30 meter per minute, what is the diameter value from this okay. equation? Can you, can someone from the colleagues give us this value? Oh, somebody is very careful. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> uh, yes. So, e, mm -hmm. yeah, so the formula is like this. Yeah. Thanks, Isaac. Isaac. Yeah, I think you are right. <laughs> so uh, let's correct the formula like this way. So what is the value for D? Oh, 
Okay, no one. Okay, so you are doing the calculation or? <laughs> so the D is, uh, when I do the calculation from this formula, I get, so I, uh, are you considering the thousand as well, Isaac? Because when the V is 30, N is 800, right? So D becomes something around 12 millimeter. It should be. If not, you should maybe check your calculation. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, yeah, that's correct. 11.93, yes. Okay, thank you. So that, that's it. So we can continue now we, we, because we, our time also is very tight. So let, uh, let's continue. Thank you, Maxim. We are at you now. We'll start, we'll start again. Yeah. Well, from the very beginning. Yeah. No, no, we continue. Okay. Uh, okay, so we've set the tool now and the height, that's the workpiece. Roughly the workpiece. Is about 19. Okay. So we'll roughly set the tool onto the workpiece. And we'll zero the axis. Okay, zero. The measuring system is set radially. That means if we put one millimeter on here, one millimeter, it will actually take two millimeters off the diameter. One millimeter that side, one millimeter that side. Okay, that diameter is 19 millimeters. We're going to make it 12, so there's seven millimeters to come off. Seven millimeters divided by two, so when that goes to 3.5, that will be finished size. Okay, <clears throat> because the machine has got potential danger, it's three horsepower the machine. So there's some safety features built in. Machine won't start, card is in position. If anything goes wrong, we have an emergency break and an emergency stop. Okay. So we've worked out the formula. We now need to set the, the speed on the machine. You should have got a figure somewhere around about 800. I don't know what figure you got with that, calc with that formula, but it should be somewhere around about 800. This is the speed selector. And as you can see, it's not precision it, that it goes in steps so we, ne we need to find that the, the speed that's closest to the one we want which is this one okay 800 to set 800 we line up that column and that row so we're in that row that column 800 so the machine is now set at 800 revs i'll just show you what 800 revs looks like That's 800 revs per minute, okay? So the first thing we do now is we're going to set a datum face on this front face. So what we'll do is, we need to touch on this face. So that is now our, our date and face in the z-axis, the z-axis. So we zero z, z zero, okay? The axis on the machine is z, x, and that would be y. But in turning, because that tool height is fixed, there is no y-axis, which is why the drawing just shows two views, okay? We don't adjust the y, so all we have is z, and X, okay? So we set Z zero. We've set X by touching on. We've set X to zero. And now we're going to take a cut, okay? The first operation, 
we go in 20 millimeters, 20 millimeters in the Z axis, and we're going to take it down to 12 millimeters in the uh, X. The material's 19, so we need to take seven millimeters off the diameter, which is 3.5 on the on the radio, on the display, 3.5. And can okay. I ask a question, so Maxim? Uh, a question. So yeah. um, Ian set set the x-axis at the outer diameter. Is that right? Like at 19 millimeter? The x-axis is at the outer diameter. Yes, x. Okay. Z. So when we say x uh, negative one, let's say, so we want to cut, uh, we want to bring the diameter down to 18 millimeter. Is that is that something like that? 12 millimeter. Can you repeat your question, Murat? No, no. I, I'm asking like if we set x as minus one millimeter, yeah. let's say, what would be the new diameter of the part? Uh, 17. It'll take one millimeter off each side because that display is set in radially. We can set that display to uh, diameter, but it's set radially. Okay, right now it's set radial position. Okay. okay, okay, thank you. So we'll just clean up the first. So, so there's zero. Okay, that's zero. We'll just do a cut of one millimeter. Turn the machine on. So we've set our diameter, our uh, um, spindle speed. We now need to set a feed. We're going to set the feed, the feed rate. So it's got an automatic feed rate. We'll set the feed rate at 0 0.05 millimeters per revolution. One revolution, 0 0.05 millimeters of travel. Okay. In order to set that, we use this. This is the feed, that's screw cutting, and this is the feed rate. So we need to set the feed rate to 0 0.05, which is AT8X, okay? AT8X8. AT8X8, which is 0 0.05, AT8X8, AT8X. Okay, so now we're ready to go. So this is the first cut. We're just going to take a cut of one point one millimeter. Start the feed. Engage the feed. You see the feed. Going to twenty on the dial. We're just rough, roughly at the moment, so we're only using a caliper. For, this is just for a rough measurement. When we come to the finished measurement, we'll use a micrometer. Okay. So it was 19, we've taken one millimeter off, so it's roughly 17, okay? It's taken one millimeter off the diameter but radially, which is one millimeter off that side, one millimeter off that side. So we're now down to 17, we're going to 12, okay? So we finish up at minus 3.5. When we get close, we'll start checking with the micrometer. So we'll take another cut now. We'll take... 1.5, so we'll go to 2.5. We could take bigger cuts of the machine, we could use coolant, but well, this is just for demonstration purposes, I'm only taking smaller cuts, okay? So we'll now take another cut, so we engage the machine. Engage
Okay, we're now going to set the next depth to three millimetres. So we should have taken six millimetres off the diameter. It started off at 19. This should be somewhere around about 13 when we finish. And then we will check with the micrometer. We'll go to three now. Okay, and now we'll set the zero. So roughly thirteen, roughly. And now we're getting near the finish, we're going to use a micrometer. This is a micrometer. The range on the micrometer is zero to 25 millimeters. Okay. On the bottom scale, each division is one millimeter. The top scale is 0.5 of a millimeter, and one revolution is 0.5 of a, of a millimeter. Okay, so this is how we read a micrometer. When you're using a micrometer, we hold the anvil, this is called the anvil, in the right hand, okay, if we're right handed. This is the thimble, and this is a ratchet. And what we do is we, we wind down the micrometer using the ratchet. Can you hear that clicking? It won't move any further, okay? So now we read so the mic on. Can we, can we ask the students if, what, what, uh, what, they, what they can read now? Yeah, let's, let's, just, let's, we, get, let's get some... Uh, I'll try to zoom into that. Uh, I can focus on it, yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, that's this it. is good, this is good, yeah. So can we have some suggestion about the diameter now? Yeah, can, uh, can everybody uh, put their like prediction or idea about the value, what micrometer reads now? Uh, sorry, I thought you would do the focus again. Yeah. That's okay. It's really hard, the focus keep moving. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Um, maybe, yeah, we'll put it on the table and we'll give you a minute. Here you go. Thank you, Ian. Oh, thanks. <laughs> So each division at the bottom is one millimeter and each division at the top is half millimeter. I think, yeah, I think now you are correct. Yeah, but so let's ask, the, ask, ask Ian. Okay, I think we got some answers now. Maxi. We have some answers, yeah. So what's the answer, Ian? 13, yeah, let's, let's, let's check with Ian now. So what we should have got, but... The figure I get is 10 on the bottom. One, two, three, so it's 13. 0 0.0567. The size it's, it's reading is 13.07. Yeah, I think they got correct. Yeah, thank you, Ian. Okay. Thank you. Okay. If we look at the surface finish, it's not very good. If we look closely at the at the at the bar we've put, surface finish is, is not very good. That's showing me that the tool is worn. Okay.
I think I can do some Kahoot in this case. Kahoot quiz yeah, for them. Yeah, he's doing some Kahoot while you change the tool. Uh, so uh, let, let's go to Kahoot, everyone. Uh, Yeah, I think you can go with the code, Murat, if you want. Y yes, I will, I will, I'm trying to go. Okay, sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, I hope everybody can be can see this screen. So not everyone is connected yet. We have six people. So can I ask everyone to connect to Kahoot? Do you have the, oops, okay, let me see. If you don't have the Kahoot information, I can try putting it again. So this is the pin number, but you can also see in the screen. Okay, so let's start, I think. Okay, so what is the, the first question is, which is the uh, not recommended for working on a late machine? So which personal protective equipment is not recommended? So first one, red is goggles, blue is apron, yellow is steel toe cap shoes, and green is earplugs. Apron, yeah, uh, that's that's correct because it may get entangled right into the feed mechanism. So steel toe cap shoes is yeah def definitely needed uh, because it protects our foot from a falling object. Okay, so let's go to next question. Let's see who is leading now. All right, great. Let's see the where do we install the workpiece on a late machine? So is it tool post, red? Or is it work post, blue? Is it clamp or yellow? Is it chuck, green? Yes, uh, it is chuck. So most of you got correct. Uh, clamp is a general term actually uh, for, for uh, holding systems. So that's not, answer so chuck is the answer spindle chuck to be more exact so let's see who is leading oh good okay true or false so we can install up to three tools on the tool post so you see the tool post where we install the tools right so how many uh, we can install there So is it true or false? Uh, yeah, it is, uh, it's a bit difficult question. It is actually false because uh, we can install up to four tools on this tool post. Yeah. All right. Let's see if I'm, if I have, a, okay. Okay, so we have a, yeah. We have a good uh, leading at the moment, and the first two is competing. Okay, let's go back to the uh, late exercise now. I think Ian is ready. Okay. Zero, set the zero. It's measuring 13.07, so we've got about one millimetre to take off, which will be 0.5 on the dial. What we'll do now is we'll go to 0.4. Okay, zero.
Mal tinha ligado? Now, 12.24. Yeah, 12.24. So we've got 0 0.24 to take off. 0 0.12 on the bar. On the readout, sorry. Twelve point zero. Okay, let's finish those. What's the first operation complete? The first operation is now complete. We now go to the second operation. The second operation is a recess. If we look on the drawing, the recess is here. It's five millimeters wide. And the finished diameter is nine millimeters. Okay, five millimeters wide, nine millimeters. So we need a tool now to do a square face. And this is the tool we're going to use to put that recess. Can you see? That's the tool that's going to do that recess. This is. The width of the tool, three millimeters. The width of the tool is three millimeters. The width on the slot is five millimeters. So we need to put this tool into the tool holder. Again, this is adjustable. That height has already been set so that that tool is in the center of the workpiece. So we remove the old tool. There's our new tool. The new tool goes into the tool post. We're going to do this operation by hand. So no feed, we're just going to do this by hand. We need to set the spindle speed now to 180. So we need to set the speed at 180. So that column, and now we need to change this, that row to there. So we're now on that row, that column, 180. We're going to set the tool. That's horrible. Set the tool on this face in the Z axis. Z zero. Okay. We're going to set the X axis by touching that with the tool. So once that tool touches that, we know that diameter is now 12. We can set the X to zero. It finishes up nine millimeters. So we just need to go 1.5 millimeters in the X. I'll just show you what I mean. So we turn the machine on. I'm now going to touch 
until that touches there. So that's touched that face. That is now our zero in X. That diameter is 12 millimetres. If you look on the drawing, the recess is nine millimetres. So we need to take three millimetres off the diameter, 1.5 on the readout. So we're just going to wind this in by hand now. Winding this by hand, we're going to 1.5. Machine's powerful, the tool's sharp, this is effortless. One point five zero. Now remember the tool is three millimeters wide, the slot is five millimeters wide. So I will move the Z back two millimeters. Okay, 2.000. This is millimetres. Just bear in mind, 0 0.000, three decimal places is one micron. That's one thousandth of a millimetre. This is how accurate the machine can be, although it goes up in gradients of 0 0.005. To put that into perspective, your hair, the average diameter of a hair is 0 0.05. So what we're working to now is 0 0.005, one tenth the width of the diameter of a hair. That's how accurately we're working. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so we've already set the zero. Remember we set the zero in the X, so we're now going to zero, okay? Again, the machine is powerful, the tool is sharp, so this is effortless. It's easy to put. And that's the second operation complete. Second operation complete. Okay. If you were here and you were to touch these faces now, you'll feel that these are very sharp. These are very sharp edges. Okay, we need to get rid of those sharp edges. On a standard engineering drawing, there is usually a statement that says something like that. Unless otherwise specified, remove all burrs and sharp edges. We do that by chamfering these four sharp edges. Okay, the drawing is actually telling us to chamfer the edges. 2.45, 0.25 by 45. In order to put the chamfer, we need a tool now that's 45 degrees. That's the chamfer tool. That is 45 degrees to the plane in X or Z. 45 degrees. Again, the height is adjustable. This tool has already been adjusted so that that tip is in the center of the workpiece. It shouldn't be below, not above, in the center. This is our chamfer tool. This is the third operation. Spindle speed now back up to 800. 800, that column, that row. That row, that column, 800. 
So we're going to do the first chamfer, two millimeters by 45, two millimeters by 45. We'll touch on. Well, Two millimeters. Two millimeters. The next chamfer, 0.25. So 0.25, we're just taking the edge. Okay. I set zero, we're actually going to do this. We'll just, we'll clean this up. We'll just clean this up, okay? One point two five. And now we have a chamfer on that face, chamfer on that face. We need to get a chamfer in this face as well, in the inside of that face. That tool is too big. If you look at the tool, the tool is too big. If I try to cut that there, it's going to cut into this as well. So we have to have a smaller tool to put the chamfer on this side. Okay. In this case, we haven't got a smaller tool, so we'll use a file. Okay, we're just taking the sharp edge. Let's do the chamfer 45 degrees. And all we're doing is we're making this safe. So now if I was to rub my hands on it, there's no sharp edges. I'm not going to cut myself. We need to make it, we call it safe, okay? So we're now down to the fourth operation. We're now going to drill a hole into the front face. We're going to, okay? There's the drawing. The hole is actually tapped. If it says M before, that means it's a metric five millimeter thread by 0 0.8 millimeters pitch. Okay. So that is a standard M5 tapped hole. So we need to drill a hole. The, the tapping drill for M5 is four millimeters. So I, I, think, I think we can stop at this point. Uh, yeah, okay, we have a break then. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll let you continue, Murat. Oh, Ian uh, is okay, right, with the break? Yeah, yeah. So we will meet around in around 15 minutes. Again, yeah. Thank you, Ian. Yeah. So uh, everyone, uh, please take a 10 minute break. So until around 10 a.m. and then five more five minutes more uh, to reflect on uh, your experience okay and then uh, we will join back around uh, 10, 10 five after 10 to uh, to talk about what you uh, if you have any question from the previous hour so see you in uh, about 10 minutes Please, if you don't have to leave the uh, Zoom connection, so please keep yourself online, right? So I'll just pause the recording for now. 
Okay, see. Uh, can somebody, some, some of you give thumbs up if you're here? I hope you had a I'm good here. break. Okay, hi. Yes, all right. Great, okay. Okay. So nice to have everyone here back. I, I would like to uh, do some more Kahoot in this case. If it's okay. Yeah, I'd like to do two more Kahoot just to remember what we have done. All right. Let's go to. I'll just change the screen. Uh, let me try to find my, sorry, I'm trying to find my screen for Kahoot. I'm having some issue here. Okay, it's here. Yeah. So let's go to the next question. So which cannot be automatically set in a manual light? So the red is feed speed. Blue is spindle speed. Yellow is workpiece diameter. And green is remaining distance to cut. Okay, so we don't. We, we have two more. We need two more attendants. Okay. So. Yeah, some, some of you said remaining distance to cut. Actually, uh, workpiece diameter is the answer uh, because we are measuring the diameter every time, you remember? Yeah, because this cannot be really set automatically like a CNC machine. It's not really easy to uh, control that. Yeah. And for the feet feed, uh, yeah, of course we can set it from the clutches there. Uh, sorry, not levers there. You may remember we were setting some, uh, we were using some knobs to, so, to do that. And for the uh, remaining distance to cut, we again, we can uh, set this using the, uh, uh, using the uh, feed mechanism. Okay. Yeah, so congratulations for the, Workpiece diameter. Okay, great. So we are now in a good. Oh, I think I can ask one more question just before, just to warm up. So, what's the purpose of measuring diameter at every pass? And uh, first one is red one is dimensional accuracy, and blue one is good surface finish. And uh, yellow one is healthy too, and green one is workpiece clamping quality. Okay, so let's meet after you finish answering.
exactly so this is i think everybody agree this is great um dimensional accuracy yes we have to make sure that we are in a very accurate uh, level almost micrometer level as you could see in the session yeah so thank you so we can now go oh wow so somebody's heating up coming from the back now a third so we will have another question but at the end okay so let's go let's start our session hi can you hear me yes, yes. great okay we can uh, continue then okay so the next operation we're going to drill a hole drill and tap a hole okay this is the drill four millimeters diameter and this in a tail stop this is just the drill chuck okay so we're going to grip the drill in the drill chuck if i was just to hold the drill in there now and drill it what would happen is when we got there the drill would wobble and we don't want that to happen so what we use is a center drill the center drill is more sturdy and it drills a hole in the center and that drill will follow that hole does that make sense so that's a center drill Okay, so we put the sensor drill in the chuck. It's just an ordinary drill chuck. This is called the tail stock. This is the head stock, and this is called the tail stock. So the drill is in the tail stock. We move the drill, tail stock up. I'm going to wind it until this starts to move backwards. So I know now that that is touching. That is touching on there. Lock the tail stock. The tail stock isn't, isn't connected to the readout. It's not connected to the readout. So we have to do this manually. So we need to set the zero. One revolution, 2.5 millimeters. We're going to go eight millimeters deep. Eight millimeters, one, two, three, and 0.5. Okay. Five millimeters. Five millimeters. Seven point five, seven point six, seven point seven, seven point eight, seven point nine, eight millimeters. Uh, can I ask a question, Maxim, to Ian? Ian, you have a question. Hey, Ian. Uh, so, if you want to use cool coolant, for example, yeah. with drilling, yeah, yeah, uh, would you use uh? Like a flood coolant there, or would you use like a spray bottle? Uh, we would use the coolant on the machine, and okay. it would just flood through that. Basically, we're cooling down the material. We're cooling down the material, and we're cooling down the drill. Okay, for demonstration purposes, so you can see what we're doing. We're not using coolant at the minute. Okay, so that that coolant recirculates in the system, right? Yeah, so the, the, the the coolant is uh, a mixture of oil and water. The water oil. cools down, is, is a mixture of mineral oil and water, the coolant. The water cools down the workpiece and the tool and the oil lubricates, okay? Okay. It, it flows through there into the tank at the bottom and then it recycles. And we have another question, yeah, thank you, Drill. As is, uh, yeah, uh, so a drill bit is just a normal drill bit. 
yeah. like the one we would use. Okay, I don't understand this question. Sorry, I was. Is this it's second drill bit just a normal drill bit? Oh, yeah, okay, just, so an, that's... just a normal drill bit, four millimeters diameter. Okay, I've, I've set the zero on the front edge. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And that's zero. Okay. On the drawing, it's thirteen millimeters depth. Okay. 13 millimeters depth. Thirteen millimeters. One, two point five millimeters. One Sorry. Two point five millimeters. One revolution. So thirteen millimeters. One, two, three, four, five. Twelve point five plus point five. Okay. Two point five. Five, So every rotation of that wheel means one millimeter deep, yeah? Every rotation of the wheel is 2.5. It's 2.5 millimeter, okay. When the wheel, the wheel starts at zero, as you can see here, and then it's 2.4, so 2.5. Okay. So for, for 30 mil. One, two, three, four, five, plus 0.5. Five plus 0.5. Five plus, for 30 millimeter, yeah, okay. Great, thank you. <clears throat> do you want to tap the hole? Annually tapping the hole. Uh, should we do the tapping as well? Right. Uh, you mean the uh, external one or internal? The external or the internal? No, the internal. We need internal. To do... uh, internal, we can do last, can we? Uh, no, we need to do it now, really, if we're going to do the internal. Uh, I think we can skip the tapping. I think the external uh, threading is more it's important. An operation. It's not really a turning operation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we, we will skip uh, hand tapping, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's the fourth operation complete. There is a tapped hole in there, but that's just a manual operation. We won't tap the hole. We'll just drill the hole. So we now come to the fifth operation, which is the screw thread. Okay. This is the screw thread. Okay. <clears throat> it tells us on the drawing, M12 by 1.75 millimeters. M12 is the diameter. It means it's a metric thread, M12 by 1.75. 1.75 is the pitch of the thread. That's the distance between these peaks, 1.75. Okay. Because so this is M12, we know that this is a standard international thread and the angle of the thread is 60 degrees. So the angle of the thread is 60 degrees, okay? Yeah. So this is the thread. Okay, the angle, 60 degrees, okay? The pitch, 1.75, okay? What we need to know, we need to work out the depth, okay? We need to work out that depth. This is basic trigonometry. So we need to work out now that, we need to work out X. We know what that is. That's 1.75 divided by two. Okay. So can we work out that depth? We can give you a couple of minutes for the student to calculate that. Is that okay, Murat? Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, everyone, can you please uh, help, help us to calculate this value? So we are- well, I 
try to leave that so that everybody can see. So we are calculating the uh, depth of the thread. Okay. So how much is it, the X value? So we know that it's the 30 degrees. Okay. And we know the pitch value, which is 1.75. So what is X? Okay, I will also calculate at my side. Okay, so we got some answers now. Thank you, uh, Leonard and Mohamed. So 1.516 millimeter is the thread depth. Is that correct, Ian? So yes, it is correct. Ian going to give you the answer now. So that should oh. be what you want. Okay. Uh, 1.0735. Um, so um, here I'm, Ian, I have a question actually, yeah. because it, maybe that 30 degrees there. Uh, 60 degrees inclusive. Yeah, but according to this, according to this, that X value becomes 1.516 millimeter. Yeah, because okay. of the, We'll because of the tangent. Or back to different. The sine of 30 degrees, 0.5 times 0.085. So what is that one, sorry, again? Two times square root, is that square root? No, no, it's two divided because you basically take half of the 175 for this. Yes. Yeah, so maybe there's... Yeah, so according to this value, uh, I'm, I'm also getting 1.516, but I think uh, uh, what we are doing here is that we are not considering the 1.516, but yeah, that's probably the value like the 1.0735 is uh, from the tables, is it? Or is it from this calculation, Ian? Is it from the table or is it from this calculation? It's from the table. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, thank you, Ian. So I think that's... Um... We can move about that one, so. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thanks. So uh, the thread depth is 1.0735, everyone. Uh, that calculation is from the... Uh, is not the value we are inputting because uh, we are using we are using a kind of a form form thread of the v v shape okay so we are inputting a less value mm -hmm. okay so this okay. is the tool again the height is set so that the tools in the center height there's the tool we're going to be using there's the angle 60 degrees okay Going to now we need to set the machine for screw cutting, okay? To set the machine for screw cutting, we need this table here. That's inches, we don't want that. This is metric. 
The pitch is 1.75, okay? This is BS8 W, okay? BS8 W. What we're trying to do now is we need to synchronize the rotation with the feed. What we want is one revolution and we want the feed to go 1.75 because that's the pitch of the thread. One revolution, 1.75, okay? In order to do that, we need to use this. This is called the screw cutting box, okay? This is a metric screw cutting box. If we look on there for 1.75, there are two figures. There are two figures, 14 and 15, okay? 40, 1, 4, 1, 5. 14 is telling me that the gear, so we need to put a gear in here now. So if we look at this box, this gear needs to have 14 tooth teeth. 1.75, 14 gear. That is a 14 gear tooth. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 14. These are different gears, so we need to use this gear. If we, we were to change the gear, we'd take that one off and we'd put one of those on there. But this is the right gear for the thread that we're doing, 14 teeth. Okay? What we do now is we engage that gear with, if you look right underneath there, right down, you see right underneath there. Let me just try it. Yeah. that's the lead screw okay and this is our 14 tooth gear and it's going to engage into that okay okay and then we lock it so our 14 tooth gear is engaged on the lead screw now the lead screw moves with the chuck one revolution and that is going to sink it to 1.75 pitch, okay? There's another figure there. That other figure, which looks like a 15, is a one and a five. And what that means is... For screw cutting, we're going to put the gear right down to 40 revs per minute. So you can see what's happening. 40 revs per minute. That row, that column, 40. Okay. When we engage the machine, you'll see that this dial is moving. What the 1, 5, 15 is, and actually a 1 and 5, it means we need to engage the gear cutting when that is lined up with 1 or 5, and that engages the gear. Okay. Once we engage the gear, we can't take it out. So the only way we can move back out on the machine is to put the machine into reverse. That all might sound a bit complicated, but I'll ex you'll see it as I do it. So when it comes to five, I'm going to engage the, the gear cutting knob. So I'm going to engage the gear when it comes down to five. When that five lines up with that, I will engage the gear. And the machine will move forward. Okay, so we're in five. And now it's engaged, okay? One revolution, 1.75. I'm going to slowly, I'm going to touch on the job now. There, that's our zero. When we get into the recess, stop the machine, apply the brake, wind off, and then put the machine into reverse. We'll do this a few times. Remember, I can't disengage the gear now. Once the gear is engaged, I can't disengage. The only way I can get back out is to put the machine into reverse. Back to the start point. I'm just going to do point two cuts now. Point two, and go again. And we're to stop it in the recess, stop, the wind off, reverse. Point 
again, another point to remember we're going to 1.0735 with our finish. The machine only goes to three decimal places, remember? So we'll round that up to 1.075. Into the gap, stop, okay, wind up. I have a question, uh, Maxim, actually. Ian, is there a question? Oh, no? Ian, um, so uh, when you set the exposition, the diameter position is it yeah. done automatically every every pass or are you putting some value there i'm winding it off and winding back on but we set the zero when we did the first cut if you remember we went yeah. on and I touched on with the tool and that was set to zero so now i'm just winding back out to zero and then when you go back to the current pass you don't yeah. input any value do you yeah, I'm increasing that by 0.2 every time. Oh, you're increasing manually by 0.2. Yeah, just 0.2. Oh, okay. It's a small cut so you can see what's happening. So this is 0.6 now. Okay. So it's only taking... Remember, the tool has a big surface area. Okay. You don't want to break the tool. 0.6, wind off to this. Just winding off there to clear the tool from the machine, from the workpiece. Point eight. You can begin to see the beginning to look like a screw fed. Yeah. Stop, okay, wind off, reverse. Nearly there. One millimeter now. So the next cut is going to be the finish cut, 1.075. This is our finish, okay? 1.075. Set that to zero now, 1.075. That's the finish cut. I will zero that. This is the final cut. When we screw cut in, because the, the tool is a big surface area, it tends to push off the workpiece. So when we screw cut in, we always take the finish cut twice. So I'm going to go to exactly the same cut now, to zero. In theory, nothing should happen, but in practice, what will happen is you'll see it take a little bit off. That's called the spring. So the, the, the tool is pushing the workpiece off. Okay, the second cut just takes that spring out. Watch. It shouldn't take anything off, but you can see it is the. Can check this thread now. Okay. 
going to check the Fed now with a Fed gauge, okay? We'll look at that Fed gauge. This is, a, this is for measuring the Fed. It's M12 by 1.75. The 6G is the standard of fit, okay? 6G is like the limit of, uh, of the fit or the limit of the Fed. So it's a 6G Fed. We're now going to check this. If the Fed's right, that should screw on. If it's not, it won't be. Of course it does, because our, our trigonometry was bang on before, wasn't it? <laughs> 1.075. And that is, that's a good thread. There's no movement there, but it goes on nice and easily. Okay. So that's our thread complete. Can do that? Yep. Yeah. Disengage the thread now. Now all we need to do is pass it off. Come back to our first tool. Remember, we're going to part this off now. We're going to go to the finish step and we're just going to part this off. Speed back up to 800. 800 back on the feed, row, column, 800 revs. That's zero. This is 10 millimeters, so we need to go 10 millimeters plus the width of the, the tool. Remember, the width of the tool is three millimeters, so we need to go 10 plus three. Okay, 13. Uh, 13. We'll do now is we'll turn it round. We'll just machine this face up, clean this up, and put a chamfer on that face. Okay. Back to our previous tool. Back to this tool. Chamfer uh, do you want to do the chamfer at 60 degree or 45. or 45 because for the 60 degree we have to move the machine so in terms of time Murat, what do you think uh, sorry what, what do you say again um yeah uh, do you want to put the chamfer on now i can put the chamfer on at 45 degrees like the front edge or we can set it to do 60 degrees it just depends how much time you've got we have to set the machine to do that. Uh, that's not a big 
that's not a big problem. I mean, you can put a chamfer. Like, can you put a chamfer or not? Any chamfer? Yeah, yeah I can put the 45 degree on this. That's fine. Yeah, we can put a chamfer and then just do some filing to uh, clean the part and then to, to debur it. That's it. Yeah. yeah, so basically what we're going to do is do 45 degree for the chamfer instead of 60, because for 60, we have to move these parts with 60 and then back to 45. That, that's so okay. Because we have a, a, a lack of time. We will do this 45 just to show you, but for 60, you will have an extra operation. That's okay. We are, I think it's just to get the idea. Yeah. Yes. So we go back to the tool for the chamfer, and this one is the fourth five degree. Yeah. No filing required. So this is our part. Yeah, that's yeah. our part. Yeah, so uh, you as you can see, oh, we got our uh, machine screw, handmade, <laughs> totally. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Ian and Maxime. So uh, let's talk a little bit about this process now. So you remember, uh, can you show the hexagonal bar stock? The hexagonal bar stock, the initial material. The raw material. Yeah, so this is the raw material here. So you can imagine that we can produce a lot of these screws uh, from this material, right? Because yeah. we can just uh, uh, clamp it, unclamp it, right? unclamp it, clamp it, unclamp it, clamp it, like to and parting at each at the end of each operation to produce a lot. So in the industry, uh, if you use a CNC light, like a automated, fully automated machine, you will see that uh, this bar stocks uh, are producing are producing this kind of screws uh, like one after another in an automatic way. Okay, so this is uh, how it is done. And we did all the operations manually, of course, here, but again, in a, if you wanna produce thousands of these parts, uh, you will do it in a CNC machine and uh, you can probably pr uh, produce each of these parts in a very short time, like in a matter of minutes, actually. So that's the uh, purpose of fully automation. And what is the what was the purpose of this exercise, this manual light exercise, is to show you each operation in detail. Okay, so I we hope that you got some uh, good idea now how to produce this part. And how would you do it if you were in a in this uh, workshop area? So I want to take you to Kahoot quiz again. If you can go to Kahoot. By the way, just uh, before that, for the metric thread, uh, I, I hope all of you understand like why Ian was setting around one millimeter because that's because of the form of the V thread. So if you check the form of the V thread online. Uh, you can easily see uh, why we set such value. Okay, so let's go to Kahoot. Okay, so we have the last question. Which operations, which operation, of course not operations, <laughs> which operation we did not do today? we did not do today so red is parting blue is threading yellow is turning green is boring
oh, it's quite long. Yeah, not, not everybody's answering and the ones who connected. So let's wait a bit more. And then we will conclude the session after. Okay, uh, boring, yes, that's correct. Boring is for enlarging the hole, right? But we didn't do such process. We just fully drill a hole in one shot. Um, for, and you will see that boring has different tools actually. So it's like boring bars we would use. We haven't seen any today. Parting, uh, we have done parting. Uh, at the end, we have to remove the part from the stock using parting operation. So that's parting off. And we use the grooving parting tool for that. Let's see who's the winner. Number three, congratulations. Number two, yes. And number one, yeah, congratulations. And uh, yeah, it was very good to have you in this session and hopefully uh, you enjoyed it a little bit uh, of course not it cannot be the face-to-face -face experience uh, but we try to give you uh, the best that we can and if you can uh, yeah okay yeah thank you maxim and we, uh, we also want to thank uh, a workshop team and uh, Özgün and Maxim for their help in uh, conveying this session. And if you have any question you can ask, I'll just uh, stop recording now. And we are done with today's session. Thank you, you're free to go. <laughs>